Welcome back. You know, we've learned over the past year that taking care of our mental health is crucial, but we can't forget about the body, too. I got some final thoughts on the importance of fitness and nutrition from Stephen Hitt of CrossFit Industrious and registered dietitian Erica Malk. Health as like a holistic idea and nutrition and fitness fit into their hand in hand. And if you just focus on those two, health is great. But if you also focus on every, you know, social aspects, which hopefully we're all increasing a little bit more, mental health, like I know the segment's really been focusing on, all of those really allow us to have health from a much more rounded perspective. But if you just focus on nutrition and fitness alone, also, often you're missing health as well. So I really like to think of them kind of as a as the fingers of a hand, I guess. I would agree with that. I think that, you know, nutrition and exercise are, are, are ultimately habits, both of them that people are working to try to form. Oftentimes when people come to our gyms anyway, they're looking to work out, they're looking to exercise, but oftentimes they're not really focused necessarily on nutrition. They want to work out so that that way they can feel better about just having more freedom with what they can eat. And then over time, the focus really does go to nutrition. What we've seen is that once people do start to eat foods, then we really start to see results really quickly. What are some of the biggest issues you've seen from clients over the past year? One big one right now recently, it's been coming up a lot more, is everyone's kind of bored with food. No one really knows what they want to be cooking anymore. Everyone's tired of eating at the same place. You know, it's food's kind of feeling a little bit more monotonous, I think, especially now that it's been going on for 15 months or so. So really mixing up variety, especially with something that tastes good, but is satisfying and nourishing is something I've been focusing on a lot with my clients. Emotional eating, people are kind of worrying about that. And what other coping mechanisms can help? because I like to say there's nothing wrong with emotional eating, right? We all grew up, whenever we cried, often we would get a bottle or a breast or something like that. So we learned that food was emotional. So instead now we're kind of looking at what other ways are you coping? You can still have food. You can still be enjoying a lot of the things that make you feel good. And if you're sad, what else are you reaching for? I've never heard someone talk about emotional eating in that way. And you are absolutely right. I like that theory. <laughs> Stephen, what about you? What are some of the biggest issues people are bringing to your studio? People feel isolated. They feel like they've you know, lost a lot of aspects of both their physical and their mental health. They're coming to us initially looking sort of their first step back, which is oftentimes you know, the hardest step to take. Over the pandemic, they've either put on weight that they don't want or they've formed habits that they know are counterproductive to their health. But it's again, it's one of the ways that they They've coped with this. And now that people are starting to feel more confident, they know that they need to start taking some steps in the right direction to pick up some of the good habits that they had before the pandemic that they may have lost during the pandemic. Someone is feeling just how you described all of us. Um, where is the first place to start? I mean, because it seems so overwhelming to think of like, I got to do a diet and exercise. So where is the first place to start? I first recommend don't reach for any of the diets that you'll find out there, any of the ones that are really popular. They're not sustainable, and more often than not, they lead us to feeling like we're in a scarcity mindset. So instead, focus on the abundance mindset. Focus on what you can add in. If you're feeling not so great about food right now, add in more fruits and vegetables. Add in consistency. Make sure you're not skipping meals. All of those different places are such a good place to start without immediately putting you in a restriction or in a scarcity mindset. As it relates to fitness, certainly the key is start small. Understand where you're coming from and what you've been through over the past 15 months. For some people, that might just be one or two days a week. For other people, that might be two to three days per week. But I do recommend choose an environment that you feel is going to both motivate you, keep you safe. And there's all kinds of different modes of fitness out there, whether it be in the functional fitness phase, working out from home, or even by yourself in a larger gym. Reach out to an environment that might push you a little bit further than, than the type of fitness that you've been experiencing over the last um, you know, 15 months. Such great advice, right? Well, for more on the stories that you've seen today on our show, just text the word FORWARD to 206-448-4545, and we'll send you a link directly to your phone. Easy peasy. Well, we've got so much information today from so many wonderful professionals. We want to take time to say thank you to everyone for taking time to share their wisdom with us so we could share it with you. And before we let you go, we want to leave you with a few final thoughts from our guests today. 
one of the things that I think is really interesting about this past year is how broadly we've expanded our notion of work. You know, I think we used to think of productivity as like, how much do you get done and what are you doing? Yeah. And we're really thinking holistically now about like the whole person and what does it mean to help somebody bring their best self to the task that they're doing. I'm hopeful that we will all come out of this and be a lot more of accepting of a variety of body sizes and shapes and all the changes that we've been able to go through over the last year. And even the fact that, you know, respect for what our body's been able to, to, to stand. Well, I'm really hopeful for the fact that we are now able to get together in person with less restrictions. And I think as the reopening process continues to unfold, we're going to feel more and more comfortable being with each other. And it's going to take some time and practice because we have been so conditioned right now uh, with the limitations that we have, which are all for our safety. I am looking forward to just routine <laughs> return a little bit for some of some of the kids. We, we know that when we can have kids with other kids, that socially that's more fulfilling for them. We're used to believing that life sort of is, is easy and we know from the history of the world that life is often not easy and sometimes it's very hard and we actually can deal with it and we can keep going. I am most looking forward to not having to wear a mask anymore while working out. <laughs> I love to party. You know, I uh, spend my days teaching about some very deep topics and helping individuals transition through a lot of deep trauma. And so as someone who started their life as a contemporary dancer and spent 13 years traveling overseas, I'm a traveler and a partier. So drinks at my house when the pandemic is over. <laughs> Can't wait. And I know we're all looking forward to getting back to normal, but until then, I hope this helped you and your family in navigating our next steps. We'd also like to give a special thank you to our partners at Primera Blue Cross for collaborating on this special hour. We believe covering all these topics from vaccines to mental health to the fight for racial equity are incredibly important to navigating the future. From the team here at King 5 in Seattle, thank you for watching and have a great day.